Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to see you all again, and I hope you are well rested and ready for day two. Uh, allow me to ex express my warm welcome to you, Ambassador Abhay Thakur. Thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, it's a real pleasure to once again have the opportunity to interact with so many of you. Um, we, uh, in fact, uh, had five plenary sessions yesterday, and all the seven task forces also had intense discussions. And these discussions obviously involved uh, uh, the best minds in the world today. Our conversations have highlighted uh, the importance of giving uh, a new meaning and purpose to the G20 framework. Uh, and this is for a challenging era. Um, why is it so challenging? It's very challenging because all the known uh, factors or vectors of a globalized world are under challenge. Obviously, trade is under challenge, technology is under challenge, finance is under challenge, and human resources and their mobility and movement is also under challenge. And I am tempted to kind of summarize uh, the uh, you know, areas, the uh, sort of crossroads of conflict as the six T's, uh, more than the four that I cited. Uh, the first T is obviously of trade, where we have seen virtually every aspect of trade today being challenged by partners uh, as well as uh, rivals. Uh, we see the same uh, you know, in technology, where technology is being weaponized at a very rapid rate. Uh, but there is also uh, the T of uh, tenets and narratives, values that are under challenge. And it's uh, important that we do not forget the fourth T of uh, terrorism. Uh, for at the end of the day, it's not just uh, uh, economics that matters, uh, security also matters. Uh, and unless we have peace and stability uh, in our societies, uh, free of the scourge of terrorism, it would be very difficult uh, for any society to progress. Uh, so we must not forget uh, the T of terrorism as well. And then we have uh, obviously uh, the lack of trust, the fifth T, the lack of trust. A number of speakers yesterday alluded to uh, the requirements of trust, the definition of trust perhaps a measurement of trust as well. And I think we might give some thought to the definition of trust. And lastly, uh, it's the T of uh, territory. Uh, there are territorial disputes around the world, the war in Ukraine, a uh, number of challenges in our part of the world uh, on account of belligerence or unilateralism or militarization on the part of some. And so therefore, I would describe these six T's as the greatest challenges today. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision is to make uh, the G20 action-oriented, decisive, and ambitious. The G20 is unique uh, uh, in that perhaps like, unlike any other presidency, it has actually ignited and excited the minds of millions of people uh, around this country. And we have never seen this in the past, that the common people of uh, a G20 president are directly involved in the celebration of uh, the G20 presidency, uh, and not just in symbolic terms, but also in substantive terms, contributing along the way. Um, I particularly recall the words of the Sherpa yesterday who said that uh, there is no other body or engagement group better equipped to mold India's priorities of the G20 than the Think 20. And he obviously did not refer simply to the uh, Think 20 India core group. He was referring to all of you who have come from different parts of the world. Uh, so more power to your elbow. Minister Hardeep Puri gave us an overview yesterday of the challenges the world faces in every facet of globalization, uh, including the infirmities of the current uh, multilateral system. Now in my view, uh, the G20 can neither subsume nor replace uh, or outright challenge the existing uh, multilateral order. Um, and that is not the intention. Um, we look to work together with that system, with the UN system. But the key point here is to avoid making the mistakes of the prevailing multilateral systems. The UN Security Council appears hoist on its own petard. We see that it is falling on its own sword uh, time and again uh, because of the privileged uh, uh, participation of a few uh, in the UN Security Council. 
Um, elsewhere, we have seen the WTO and the WHO weakened by the either the politics of trade or the politics of the pandemic. But at the end of the day, it hurts uh, the common people around the world. The G20 today has a genuine opportunity to work alongside existing uh, multilateral ins institutions and organizations, uh, but to provide a, a unique opportunity to all major nations, including the contending ones uh, and the contending economies, to step away from the traffic jam or the gridlock, as you might call it, on a highway, uh, to pull out, uh, pull away into an apron that we can create where they can maneuver, they can sit together, they can talk. Uh, away from that jam that has been created on the highway. So we are like that uh, apron uh, where we can pull ourselves away from the existing uh, gridlock or, or, or traffic jam that's been created. Friends, there are also some other unique features about India's Think20 engagement group, which uh, again, I'm very certain that you have noticed yourselves. Uh, firstly, the Indian Think20 has been working very actively uh, from day one with all the other engagement groups. This is something, again, unique uh, to the Indian context. Uh, um, secondly, in keeping with India's vision, we are guided in our work by the mantra of uh, inclusivity uh, horizontally across the world, uh, across the gender gap, and vertically in the country, taking the G20 and the Think20 process to all the four corners of this country and involving, as I said before, millions of people uh, that seek to, to have their voice heard uh, within India and across the global south. We are also very actively in touch with the T7, and it augurs very well that we are working with Japan in this case, uh, the current G7 chair, uh, and Japan is one of our closest strategic partners, and we are therefore off to a very good start there. Uh, a, a natural partnership is going to provide the necessary impetus to this T7, T20 dialogue. Um, and there's one other unique feature. Um, I'm not sure if you have noticed it, but uh, Dr. Samir Saran had alluded to it uh, right in the beginning, that uh, the chair and the secretariat uh, uh, are in different places. But there is uh, reasoning behind this, and I think it's Prime Minister Modi's vision uh, to uh, get all the think tanks in India to work together, to make it a habit of cooperation such that we can really deal with the biggest challenges before India, before the uh, entire world uh, in a more efficient manner. So I think uh, uh, I, I can say that we are really uh, working seamlessly together from day one, uh, and I'm profiting uh, through my association uh, with this uh, gentleman here who's best described as a human dynamo. Um, uh, he is up at 3 a.m. in the morning um, doing his work uh, to support you all. Um, between now and September this year, I hope we can all put our heads together to generate new ideas. As Prime Minister Modi said in the concluding session of the Voice of uh, Global South Summit yesterday, India will give voice to the global south and ensure that the world takes a human-centric approach to globalization. The world, in fact, in my view, needs new values, new ethics, um, and uh, uh, it's required to adopt uh, a values-based approach to globalization today, where we step away from this deep desire to simply profit and make money uh, to garner for ourselves all the resources possible and to move towards sharing and caring. Uh, so I think uh, that's where I'd like to see uh, the G20 process go in accordance with India's philosophy. And there I think India, with your support, uh, Think20 in particular, is the best place to, uh, in fact, create a new moral compass uh, for this world today. With that... I would now like to uh, say that uh, we will have the opportunity to hear Ambassador uh, Abhay Thakur. Uh, and thank you all very much uh, for being here this morning. Thank you.